Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear attendees, welcome to this year's Huawei Connect Europe to our manufacturing session. This year, our topic will be enable smart factory through all wireless connectivity. And the main topic uh, of the sessions uh, just now will be mainly about how to speed up the implementation of uh, smart factory through Wi-Fi 6 and through 5G. My name is Chesim Demir. I'm CTO of uh, Manufacturing Solutions uh, Vertical in Huawei uh, Europe since four years. And before that, I'm coming from automotive business, especially from manufacturing space. Now, I would like to introduce uh, our next speaker, Mr. Nilesh Auti, who is the Chief Digital Officer, as well as uh, Global Head of uh, Manufacturing Vertical Industry at Tech Mahindra, and he will explain to you concepts uh, and uh, uh, methodologies to build the flexible and smart factory with wireless connectivity. Welcome our next speaker. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Everybody around the globe in different time zones. Uh, today's session along with Huawei, we'll discuss flexible and smart factory and how to make it possible using the wireless network. My name is Nilesh. Um, I am the digital officer and I head manufacturing industry group at Tech Mahindra. Welcome for this session. Um, as we go ahead, you know, it's a very interesting topic. Uh, industry 4.0, factory, things already kind of started, various use cases. Um, now the wireless, 5G, Wi-Fi 6, wireless kind of coming into picture. Also the influence of OT and cybersecurity. Uh, let's discuss, you know, we have some point of view in terms of the future journey uh, on this roadmap. Just to set the context, you know, uh, in today's session we are going to talk about 14 and a half million assets. Most of these are brownfield. Now these are the assets which are spread across uh, 50,000 transport and ports, spread across 3.3 .3 million warehouses, spread across 10.7 million factory establishments, uh, you have oil fields, you have power plants, there are 140,000 plus utility plants over there. And then you have mines, you have uh, uh, 263,000 plus of the labs and the hospital setup. All of these are carrying quite a huge amount of asset. Uh, approximately when we look at, you know, it's almost about uh, 4.5 trillion uh, dollar worth of the assets over there. Now there are quite a few segments which are greenfield as well because, you know, when you look at the high-tech manufacturing or if you look at renewable plants, you also have some of the greenfield and new assets which are coming on table. But today's session, let's look at you know more from the brownfield perspective. So as we go ahead, um, you know, the journey of Industry 4.0, uh, the last three or four years, we have seen that you know these millions of assets are maturing from the pilot purgatory phase and they are ready to go towards the mass deployment. That's an industrial adoption of it. What we have seen the last three or four years is uh, the use case, for example, quality throughput, uh, getting more production, uh, statistical process control, establishing the online quality uh, you know, for the production unit, um, doing the OT security, the endpoint, edge point at the machine level, uh, predictive maintenance, condition-based maintenance to help reduce uh, the cost of maintenance, and the underline for all of this is sustainability, is about energy management, it is about uh, the circular economy. So today, most of us, you know, the UN General Council, Green Council norms, all of us, we are also trying to adhere to, uh, you know, the sustainability norms across in our factories. These are kind of a fairly proven use cases. I'm sure you and me, we have all gone through it. Uh, we have put pilot at a line level, uh, at a given uh, individual plant level. And we have seen, you know, the benefit out of it. Now the question ahead is, as I go towards the mass deployment, when I go towards the industrialization of this solution, uh, what is the right cost for adoption? And the another question is, what is the future uh, technology? What is the future architecture? Uh, as we all know, like in the industrial establishment, once you take and deploy the solution, you know, we are not going to change it the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years kind of it. So it has to be a future proof. On that, you know, when we look at what is the current setup across this manufacturing companies, um, what is the 
current kind of a landscape and we see that almost 95% of these assets are brownfield assets. Uh, these are been deployed with multiple of IT and operations technology solution. There is a distributed architecture um, and to support that as the use cases are growing, you know, the current plant network, the current plant infrastructure is not something really sufficient. And then the ask from uh, many of these manufacturing companies is that they will be scaling up, they will be adopting more and more of uh, the IoT, AR, VR, uh, blockchain, AI, ML kind of a use cases across in their uh, factory and plant setup. And then to do that, they are looking in terms of uh, how the factory infrastructure, you know, it is in terms of network, it is in terms of the end, the edge, and also from the security perspective, uh, what kind of a infrastructure uh, should be available. Some of the key ask from many of our customer is that, um, you know, when we take and start deploying industry 4.0, um, how do we upgrade the factory infrastructure? Give us the future proof architecture. Um, how do I reduce the cost of my network, which has been laid last 20, 30, 40 years with the help of, you know, the Ethernet and MPLS kind of alliance? How do I go more wireless? How do I have more clean technology, more green technology? Um, should I uh, sustain the, uh, 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 you know, this network and this infrastructure should also be able to sustain the uh, industrial uh, some of the norms and uh, you know the environment of the factory uh, in this given case. While they heard a lot about 5G and uh, Wi-Fi 6, while many of they give a feedback that yes, this future technology looks promising, but then the question is, is it ready? Is it landed? Uh, can I start using it from tomorrow? And is this what is like uh, you know the future roadmap um, as we take it ahead, or? Should I wait for two years and then, you know, uh, uh, get on to this uh, sort of a journey? So we'll go one by one. You know, I think the first uh, question what we raised is, uh, what is the future architecture? What is the right technology architecture for my next 10, 20 years in terms of the journey? Uh, so the answer to that is the wireless will influence a lot to help you, uh, you know, to build the architecture of the future. There are two or three factors which will play a big role over here. So number one is edge, you know, it is the device edge, it is also the enterprise edge. So the edge will play a big factor. Uh, the cloud will play the second big factor. And the data, you know, between these two places, uh, which will help all of us to make the decision. Uh, so that's going to play a big factor over here. To arrange this, the various use cases will demand different type of bandwidth, will demand different type of the latency, um, uh, you know, in this whole industry 4.0 architecture. Uh, so to conclude, the answer is, you know, we are talking about uh, the MEC architecture, which is um, multi-access edge compute architecture. So in this diagram, you know, you can see in terms of there is edge for the devices. So many of the use cases which are related to Go, no Go, the drone related, uh, the computer vision based uh, quality inspection kind of a use cases. So those are the use cases which will get enabled uh, through the edge part at the device edge. Then there are another set of a use cases uh, which will require, you know, the predictive analytics, which will require some part of it uh, where the compute is required, uh, uh, you know, where from the application perspective, let's say it could be the AR, VR, streaming of the videos, uh, doing the maintenance part of the activities. So those are the activities and the use cases will happen at enterprise edge level, right? So you will see that you know, the left hand side of the bubble is what we call where the data is on premise either at the edge or in the uh, given four walls of the factory. And then the another part which is more a transactional part. So where you will have um, the manufacturing execution system transactions, you will have PLM, you will have those you know the industrial and R&D kind of the IT plus integration of that with uh, ERP systems or integration of that with uh, supply chain system. So that workload is what will shift towards the cloud. So that's how the cloud plays a role. That's how the edge uh, uh, plays a role over here. And to integrate this, I think the network is going to play a very critical role. And that is where the importance of the wireless network, it comes into picture. Um, wireless is what will help us to go towards and adopt the 
uh, MEC architecture. So how the wireless is going to play the role is now in this MEC architecture or in the journey of uh, industry 4.0 when we look at, uh, we looked at a few of the use cases, right? Now these use cases could be in terms of, let's say uh, at the edge, I am taking some of the no-go decision or it could be in terms of I am using the AR, VR, uh, you know, for the maintenance activity. It could be predictive maintenance which I am doing or, you know, it will then start moving towards in terms of, uh, let's say there is an AGV and the movement of AGV from point A to point B and to guide the direction. Or it could be, let's say if there are large mines and in mines you have the autonomous equipment, some of the automatic uh, equipment and the movement of that. Um, so on this graph over here, you know, you will see that uh, these use cases will range from like 20, 25 Mbps kind of a bandwidth requirement and then it will go high up to 70, 80 Mbps kind of a bandwidth requirement. But then when we looked at, you know, when you bring all these use cases together for a given, let's say a mid-size kind of a plant, then you re require more than 250, 300 Mbps kind of a bandwidth then you require you know uh, this particular plant uh, which will generate more than 3 terabytes of data per day so here then we are talking about uh, the storage part of it here then we are talking about the bandwidth part of it and all that and that is where a strong and wireless network will enable us the adoption of cloud you know from the storage and other perspective and the right latency coming through the uh, wireless you know the latency as well as the bandwidth will help us to deploy uh, these kind of a use case. Then comes the next question, next question is, uh, what's a journey? How do I get started? Where do I get started? Is 5G, Wi-Fi, is it completely mature? Is the wireless uh, the answer and then can I get it start from tomorrow? Um, then the answer for that is, you know, it's a gradual journey. So when we look at, you know, the various uh, type of a use cases, we see that there are certain decisions happening at the edge in most of the brownfield plant you already have the ethernet uh, you already have the existing network which is helping you to take the decision uh, the next part of a use case is you know uh, which are uh, dependent on the sensorization so from the sensor you know you are taking the data and on that data you are taking certain action this could be the maintenance or the quality uh, uh, related use cases these use cases you can start porting it onto the Wi-Fi or the LTE kind of a network. And then you have the next type of a use cases which will involve mobility. And wherever the mobility and the movement of material has been involved, now that is where the private LTE, the private network inside the four walls of the factory is coming into picture. Now when we start advancing, uh, you know, the next two years, what we are seeing is the 5G technology is maturing very fast. Uh, the next two years, while you know from the telecom side of it or from the private network side of it the 5G and Wi-Fi 6 are the technologies are uh, taking a good mature shape it also requires the receiving side of it you know our uh, various of the whole of the OT infrastructure whether it is uh, the switches and routers and our computers and all that we also need to upgrade and see that no those are on the receiving side are able to take those signals which are coming from 5G or the Wi-Fi 6. Now those, that's a complete ecosystem uh, is what we see is kind of maturing. That's where, you know, the companies like Huawei, they are been investing not just from the wireless technology point of view, but also from, uh, you know, the various of the devices and the OT infrastructure uh, perspective. So on the right side, then we see that um, in today's con um, date, uh, some of the use cases related to the AR, VR, you know, you can then get started with the 5G hotspot uh, these are available, you can deploy this, um, that's a kind of a start of your journey and then as you go ahead in the next two years, then you will see that, you know, between the 5G plus Wi-Fi, uh, fairly a complete end-to-end -end answer for the wireless network uh, for the factory, for the industrial environment, for the mines, uh, is kind of has already started taking shape. So our recommendation you, for you will be uh, not take and expand on the traditional MPLS or the uh, Ethernet based lines. As you start thinking more towards your industry 4.0, the mass uh, adoption, start bringing the wireless technology to it, start bringing the cloud to it, start bringing the edge to it. That is where you know your future journey for the MEC architecture uh, is going to take shape. 
Now in this journey, just to put a, a, a couple of proof points on table, um, I think Huawei and Tech Mahindra, uh, uh, we have cre already created a very good synergy the last three or four years. Uh, we had done some good projects where we have landed in one of the mining company, we have landed in uh, quite a few of the smart city projects uh, along with Huawei. And we are also one of the, uh, you know, the best partner recognized by uh, Huawei in this journey. Just to put one uh, case study as an example, you know, Exaro uh, is one of the largest mining company in Africa. One of the challenge for Exaro was safe mine, connected mine, sustainability, environment, health, safety. Uh, there were like, you know, almost like about 70, 80 plus of the use cases uh, which uh, Exaro wanted to realize. The challenge for them was, you know, these mines are in remote place. Uh, you don't have the public network which has been available over there. Uh, the second challenge is, um, you know, there are a lot of devices and assets on the surface but there are also quite a few of the deep mines. Now how do I go deep inside the mines to make sure that no, I am deploying the safe worker. I am deploying some of the, um, uh, you know, the devices, AR, VR or the assistance for this safe worker and all that. So in that case, you know, the, uh, the network really need to go and reach to that uh, end point over there. The use case is, and the case study is very much available uh, in the public domain. Um, you know, there is also the YouTube uh, uh, which has been available over here. Couple of years back, we have deployed this solution. Uh, we have established a pit network. The pit network, it includes a few of their mines, few of their surface unit, also integrating that uh, with the offices. Uh, with the help of Huawei uh, LTE technology and the microwave, uh, we have established, we have deployed this network for uh, Exaro. So to conclude on our today's session, you know, what does it mean is the uh, wireless smart network will enable to deploy the MEC architecture, multi-access edge compute architecture for the mass deployment adoption of industry 4.0. Uh, this will be a combination of edge, network, as well as the cloud coming together. The second most important point is the MEC architecture uh, helps me to have a single instance centrally and then the deployment at uh, you know, the multi-plant, multi-facility levels and all across the globe. That helps me to have control the overall cost of uh, ownership at least by about 25 to 35 percent level. This is both because of the, you know, my speed of deployment, also my cost of support maintenance and all. It greatly get controlled over here. And the third most important point is since this is a software defined network, um, you know, it also helps me to build various of the personas which I can deploy it, uh, you know, through the network, especially for the OT security. OT security is something which is very critical. I don't see that any of us is still mature yet. But as we go towards, um, uh, you know, the wireless-led MEC architecture, I think the OT security will fall uh, well in place over here. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. Open for any of your questions. Bye. Thanks. And now I would like to introduce actually myself with the next uh, uh, presentation about boosting um, manufacturing industry a smart factory through all wireless connectivity. Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our session about boosting smart factory with Huawei Innovative Wireless Technology. My name is Chesim Demir. I'm since four years in Huawei covering the role for solution development and partner development for manufacturing and uh, logistics industry and worked before that uh, more than 20 years in automobile industry, especially in the manufacturing space. In my session, I will share some requirements and some potentials of wireless factory uh, uh, solutions. What are the benefits of those solutions for the uh, manufacturing industry? Then I will give some scenarios about wireless factory where actually we are working on together with our customers and at, at the end I will give also some solutions and technologies that we are providing to the industry to enable the wireless factory. First of all, if we look to the two days processes, uh, there are a lot of pain points and bottlenecks in the industry, in the manufacturing and logistics, starting from supply chain uh, going up to warehousing, production and assembly. 
and especially in the supply chain logistics, there are topics like uh, efficiency, transparency of assets, flexibility are big issues. In the production space, we are talking about uh, huge cost per unit. We are talking about issues in the maintenance, quality issues, production downtimes and so on, which are mm, getting mainly improved with wireless factory solutions. But before coming to those solutions, I will explain just one example what wireless factory could bring to the industry. So if we look to the manufacturing of a car, uh, as example, uh, one car needs around four to nine years, depends on the model, to get developed as a new model. And then the uh, as next uh, uh, development of the next model is getting started. For preparing the production to, get, uh, to be able to produce one new product, there are 12 to 24 months time frame needed to prepare the production processes to be able to produce the new car or the new product. So, and that's why if they are based on the wireless factory a possibility there to just reduce those uh, preparation time just for a few weeks, it's a huge benefit because on a yearly basis each change uh, which would require the changes also of the uh, cabled infrastructure can be avoided and for each car model around uh, multiple weeks of uh, saving can be covered or can be achieved means there are multiple weeks of uh, uh, faster time to market possible just by wireless factory. So what does it mean? I mean wireless factory it's so important, but why it's not there yet? Like the cost efficiency requirements and also like technical requirements like the uh, bandwidth, like latency, reliability of the network, etc. Because of that reason, in the past, the entire connectivity was covered actually completely 100% by cable networks. But recently, because of the Wi-Fi technologies available, Wi-Fi is getting uh, more and more utilized in the factories. But uh, uh, due to the reason that Wi-Fi 4 and 5, as well 4G, was not covering all the requirements, it came up just that around 70% are still cabled network, cabled covered, and only around 30% are wireless in the factories. But nowadays, as Wi-Fi 6 and 5G together are all uh, uh, covering uh, uh, all requirements, this would lead actually to come up to a fully wireless factory, which would actually increase, as I mentioned in the page before, the flexibility, which would actually reduce cost because all the changes and so on, which need to be done on a regular basis, uh, is actually getting much more simplified. The time to market can be shortened. The problem solving of the cable network as well as the maintenance is getting simplified and also the solution deployment of new use cases, new scenarios can be much more accelerated because there are no big changes on the infrastructure anymore needed. This would mean actually that uh, the ICT, especially as a converged wireless architecture, is becoming the foundation of a real intelligent and smart factory, which is leading to a fully connected, uh, uh, intelligent, fully connected and fully sensing plant. With that, I would come over to the scenarios, which are actually the main drivers of the wireless factory, because as you know, all investment or each investment, especially in the manufacturing, is not getting done just for sake of investment, is getting done because of the expected added value. And those added value is from the customer's perspective or from the industry's uh, pers perspective are getting delivered to those scenarios starting actually with the software download at final assembly which would bring actually a huge benefit to the customers because each product doesn't matter if it's a machine if it's a car or any other type of product which is needing a software downloaded at the final assembly to fulfill all or uh, to bring all the features of the product. And uh, if there is a possibility to have a last mile download of software at the 
final assembly is increasing the flexibility, especially nowadays uh, because of the uh, required changes on the software. But also scenarios like AGV control, because AGV are getting leverage much more, especially in the logistics and also line supply in the production space, and also like forklifts and so on, uh, those are getting uh, much more uh, better utilized with wireless factory solutions. Robot control to increase the flexibility of production line updates and also machine vision, talk tools like at the final assembly. There are a lot of uh, different talk tools are getting used which are getting connected to the network to get the right parameters for the production process. Positioning, automated driving in plant as well as also automated valid parking remote expert or uh, with AR and VR technology, mobile HMI that people can actually uh, use a tablet type of uh, HMI for machine control, means uh, the machine cost will, redu will be reduced because the uh, on-site uh, fixed installed HMI are getting disappeared in the future, so it's getting replaced with tablets that uh, can be utilized to monitor and to also control multiple machines. Uh, then also connected sensors and connected elevators are actually the main, as of now, the main uh, scenarios that are driving wireless factory because the expected values are much higher, which are actually arguing the, uh, to deploy wireless factory. So we analyze actually based on 18 requirements like bandwidth, like latency, reliability, etc. Those 15 use cases very deeply together with customers and we came up that only a converged network architecture with coexisting technology. This means there is 5G available, but 5G will not uh, be the uh, proper network or connectivity for all use cases. There is Wi-Fi 6 available, but even Wi-Fi 6 is not just by itself, not the proper connectivity solution for all scenarios. So that's why the coexisting architecture, Wi-Fi 6 plus 5G plus other wireless technologies like ultra wideband, like RFID and so on, are the technology core of the wireless factory and uh, coexisting uh, uh, technology will bring actually the the main base for the wireless factory, which will allow uh, to come up to a cost optimal network, which is actually our target to integrate all of those technologies to uh, a cost optimal network. Just giving one example of it, uh, just for, for as example, what this integration means. As you can see, as I mentioned, one of the use cases or scenarios is the positioning and positioning, especially in out, uh, indoor area, which requires a very high accuracy in terms of centimeter space, uh, is not getting delivered by 5G and is not getting delivered by Wi-Fi 6. So that's why ultra wideband is still actually the quasi standard technology for positioning in the indoor area in the manufacturing and ultra wideband requires a dedicated certain cable network to connect all the satellites of the ultra wideband to the network in terms of backbone network uh, to be able uh, to provide positioning technology. Means increasing of the cable network is also increasing the maintenance of the cable network and also the complexity. And if we take the example of Bluetooth and others, it's the same. So here in this example, it's just one solution to uh, explain it here, we are working together with uh, our partner Trumpf together to combine ultra wideband with our Wi-Fi 6 technology to replace the cabled network with our Wi-Fi 6 technology uh, with a certain dedicated uh, feature from Huawei that provides a reliable network for positioning use cases. So the cable network is disappearing, the communication of the Satellites are happening with Wi-Fi 6, so which leads actually a TCO saving around 20%. So because the cable network is disappearing and also the maintenance of the cable network is disappearing. And there are also uh, additional functionality getting delivered like additional capability to add uh, Bluetooth 
and Zigbee and other technology uh, to the to the uh, Wi-Fi wi 6 um, network. Another example of the integration uh, we are working actually as, as we are um, ICT vendor, we are working on the infrastructure level to create high efficient, high performant and highly integrated solution to by integrating different layers to create uh, the synergy between the different layers like 5G, Wi-Fi 6 and others and so on. But we are also working with our partners together to provide the capability and the platforms to uh, enable customers that they are able to utilize and leverage lean management approaches. Here in this example, the solution with Forcom that provides actually on the solution layer, on the application layer, the capability that each type of machine or data source can be connected to a platform uh, that the lean management uh, approaches can be utilized to uh, avoid waste in the process and uh, to be able to uh, optimize on the highest uh, possibility the processes. But on the infrastructure layer, we are combining it with approach of wireless factory that because if such an approach is getting uh, approved uh, by, a, uh, by having a POC uh, and, and need to be deployed uh, multiple sites, multiple stations and production lines, the enterprises need to have a plug and play approach to much faster deploy the solution to thousands of machines. So here the base is actually again the wireless factory, the wi based on Wi-Fi 6 uh, solution from us that provides not only the, the infrastructure level of network but also the uh, terminal layer means uh, Wi-Fi 6 uh, uh, and terminal that uh, uh, provides the capability that machines can be connected very easily to the network without changing the in uh, infrastructure. This is actually a full set of uh, the different uh, um, layers to get integrated to come up uh, to a, a, a simplified machine connectivity through Wi-Fi 6 but the same is valid also for 5G. Here you can see that uh, with help of this uh, CPE it stands for a customer premise equipment that with help of CPE each type of machine can be very simple and easily con uh, getting connected to the network. And the network is also getting provided by Huawei with Wi-Fi 6 APs and, and the backbone behind of it. Now, what are those solutions that we are providing and technologies that we are providing as Huawei? First of all, the main target of us is actually integrating of different layers of the uh, different, of t different technologies to come up to a highly integrated solution in terms of wireless factory means a wireless factory actually contains different set of solutions. Wireless means, it's our belief as Huawei that uh, the wireless connectivity will replace all the cable network between machine layer and the backbone layer. The backbone layer itself will be mainly optical network, op uh, optical technology, but the wireless uh, layer means uh, the connectivity between machine and the backbone will be vi completely wireless in the future, will, which contains 5G, Wi-Fi 6 and other type of wireless technology. And our target is integrating those solutions to come up to a cost optimal network, which delivers reduced cost to the customer, which reduces cabled networks, increases flexibility, and especially accelerates actually deployments of new use cases that I mentioned before and also uh, simplifies operation and maintenance. At, at, at least as well increases the transparency. Here you can see uh, which type of categories are requiring which technology and uh, you can see based on the requirements uh, which is actually getting ref uh, uh, mapped to the triangle of 5G that you can see on the, on the uh, right hand side from uh, the bandwidth uh, which is going up to 20 gigabit per second down to uh, latency which is uh, going down to one millisecond and also um, massive type of machine communication in terms of uh, number of assets that is getting connected to the network. So at the end 
the uh, uh, coexistent technologies are required to provide a cost optimal network, provide the technology in the space or in the area where it is needed. That's why our target is actually to provide this type of integration, to integrate uh, the different technology layer, to increase the synergy and to reduce the cost for the, for the enterprises. Here just giving one other type of integration and, and capability that is getting uh, utilized. Here if we are looking to the Wi-Fi 6, you can see here on, on the, on the right-hand side the standard features of Wi-Fi 6, which is actually compared to Wi-Fi 5, getting much better in terms of bandwidth, in terms of latency, in terms of the capacity. But there are also, that you can see on, on the uh, more right uh, 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 here, that there are also four features getting provided by Huawei, which is actually coming from uh, uh, especially 5G technology because Huawei is the company that provides both technologies at the same time. So means uh, one is that our antenna design in Wi-Fi 6 is coming from 5G that provides the, the signal beaming function, which actually leading to more coverage and leading to uh, less number of access points uh, uh, that customer needs uh, to have the same coverage. Uh, the second uh, is the topic of the smooth uh, rooming or lossless rooming concept that provides within 10 milliseconds uh, uh, um, rooming uh, to the next access point and uh, without any data package loss. Uh, the another one which is especially needed for ultra wideband for the positioning uh, 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 system solution uh, that we are able to reserve bandwidths for dedicated application for mission critical application like the positioning. You can imagine if you have a talk tool in your hand in the assembly where uh, you have a high tech time like in 10 or 15 seconds tech time and if you lose the positioning data for the talk tool for few seconds it's a big problem could lead to a production downtime means uh, ultra wideband application for positioning requires high reliability for uh, 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 ensuring it uh, we are reserving bandwidths for this application that it's not getting disturbed uh, doesn't matter how the remaining Wi-Fi network is getting utilized. The last one is actually that you have one access point for multiple wireless technology that you can plug in into Wi-Fi 6 access point. ZigBee ultra wideband Bluetooth or RFID IoT cards without any change on the infrastructure, without any additional cabling. So you can provide with one access point multiple wireless technology. If it's coming to the 5G, it's uh, actually also one to uh, main topic is the performance. Second topic is actually the entire portfolio. So here you can uh, actually uh, see that we are delivering from smartphone to CPE to baseband unit to antennas up to core network, the entire portfolio in 5G to cover uh, the, the full integrated solution for our customers. And the last point, the third point in terms of wireless factory is, as I mentioned, we believe that wireless is only replacing all the cabled network between machine layer, means shop floor layer and the backbone layer. And the entire backbone layer will be actually uh, 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 kept on uh, optical network and here as well to uh, uh, increase the integration to achieve a cost optimal network. We are also delivering optical network as, as a uh, backbone uh, to optimize the performance, to reduce cost, to reduce cabling effort, and also to increase um, efficiency of the network and to, to simplify the maintenance of the operation of the network. With that, actually, I would invite you to visit us in our open lab in Ismaning. So we establish actually in Ismaning an uh, open lab where we establish all of the technologies that I'm, I talked about. And uh, it's uh, actually open for customers and partners as a platform that our customers and partners uh, can come and can validate and, and uh, evaluate use cases uh, which requires those uh, environment. In Ismaning, we are having a 5G private network 
with a license from Bundesnetzagentur that we are able to operate the industrial frequencies here in our lab and the entire technology stack is available in our lab and is uh, valid uh, or is, is open for customers and, and partners uh, to test with us together use cases uh, to uh, uh, avoid the first investment if, uh, 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 for just um, test purposes. And now I'm welcoming our partners like Trumpf, KWS, Gestalt Robotics, Gefasoft as well, Forcom to show their solutions uh, uh, combined with infrastructure components and infrastructure elements from Huawei, which provides higher performance to our customers on a joint base. Thanks a lot. Now I would like to introduce our next speaker from our partner Trumpf, Mr. Eberhard Wahl, who is head of uh, new business technologies at Trumpf, and he will uh, present to you uh, enabling of uh, asset locating solution with Wi-Fi 6. Hello everyone, my name is Eberhard Wahl and I'm working group leader of the working group use case inside Omlox. Omlox is an open standard for location. And today we talk about the benefits of combining this asset location solution with Wi-Fi 6. So what is asset locating? Basically, you do have a lot of different assets in your complete factory. So you might be aware of your goods, uh, of your carriers, maybe your forklifts, handling equipment, but there's also a lot of work in progress. So your orders, what is the status of your orders? Not knowing exactly where your work in progress is, is a real problem for a dynamic and agile real-time production optimization. And if you don't find your assets not in time or too late, you also risk downtimes due to missing parts and assets. Not finding your for forklift, for example, or let's say there might be a forklift, but this is already occupied. The other one is just another building. This can result in a low utilization of assets. If you just don't know where are all your assets and which one is occupied, you just risk of not efficiently using it. So asset location is a real, real big topic. There's a solution to that. It's uh, done by real-time location systems. And the best technology here is ultra wideband. Basically, ultra wideband is a very accurate time of flight measurement. And it does do in the term of, as it is defined inside Omlox, a real drill iteration. So by knowing the distances between a mobile unit and some fixed points, so-called uh, anchors or satellites, it can calculate the position of the mobile unit. There are already a lot of those kind of solutions out there in the market. The problem is most of them are totally proprietary. And by having proprietary solutions, you just risk to get a vendor login. And um, it's definitely not what you want. And you can only combine it with units from this vendor. This is completely solved with Omlox. Now there's one topic still remaining. It's basically the complete installation costs, the cabling of those kind of satellites. You want to get this kind of infrastructure definitely in an affordable way. And this is now solved with the combination with Huawei. And we show this later in more detail. Now you would probably say, okay, now I do have my infrastructure, but what can I do with it? And that's something we want to explain in this slide. With this infrastructure, as this is defined in an open standard with an open Omlox interface, you can attach any kind of system from any kind of supplier. So if you do buy now your power tools with Omlox inside, you can easily locate them. If you want to see what's going on in your factory with an AR system, just connect it to Omlox and you can see all the assets live. If you want to see this, how this works, you can visit um, the Omlox channel on YouTube and we have some nice videos showing this one. For sure you can have HEVs or AMRs from different suppliers. You can easily integrate it into Omlox and they can absolutely locate themselves even at the start. 
So there's no training necessary here. And there's a lot more which can be done uh, with asset location. So basically, you know where your assets are, where your tags are, but all the other objects also you can locate uh, and with a lot of opportunities. So the benefit of the standardization is quite clear. Now let's come to the benefit of the combination with the Wi-Fi access point from your way. On the left side, you see how a normal conventional installation takes place. Basically, the satellites, they are connected with an Ethernet cable with a switch box. There's um, quite some costs associated to that. So it's not uh, a real problem to bring power to, another, to some place, but uh, to put an Ethernet cable correctly to length, install it correctly, and uh, do also this topology with the switch box, this is quite time consuming and it's quite expensive. So that's a real problem on the left side. And you want to get your MOX infrastructure in an affordable way. So what we show on the right side um, is just far more efficient. We connect the satellites via Wi-Fi. And by connecting them via Wi-Fi, we do not need the expensive cabling anymore, resulting in a more flexible way of installing the satellites and also in a lower initial costs. So it comes with quite some benefits on your side. Now, let's look uh, in detail about all these benefits by combining it here again. If we compare it on the left side, you see um, that's uh, the old way. So it's a lot of cabling, it's a lot of planning, and it's also then once it is done, it's kind of fixed. You don't want to change this anymore. Uh, you always need a ladder or some lifting equipment. So that's quite not that easy. And you also have now two different system with uh, operation and maintenance costs. If um, we look, if we do it together, we just see that a lot of those costs, they just disappear. Well, it's very simple. It's now all combined. And here with this fully integrated solution, and that's what's shown on the, on the right box, we say, okay, um, this Omnox satellite is now inside uh, the Wi-Fi 6 access box. In this access point, you get, as an option, already Omnox inside. And now the installation is um, dramatically cheaper by installing your Wi-Fi 6, you can automatically also get Omnox. And that's um, the real benefit about that one. Um, look at it as an additional feature, just like you know, um, the next generation of smartphones does have more functions than the one before. The same is here. Uh, the next Wi-Fi 6 installation already comes with Omnox. And um, this kind of flexibility and cost reduction can also be made visible here with this sheet. So where do your big savings come from? So we already talked about the biggest part, which is the cabling. Um, and this is definitely dramatically reduced. You still need power um, for the anchors, that's for sure. So it will not be totally for free, but power is something uh, very simple available um, and not complex uh, to install. And you can also connect it easily in a line. You don't need this switch box in between. So therefore um, cabling is dramatically cheap, but it's definitely the biggest point. As also the planning, um, can be done together and the training as this is now one setup, basically. This will also play an important role and for sure also there's one casing basically needed. So also this kind of part will become cheaper. So it's a very simple kind of argumentation. You get an open system, which can be combined by any other kind of location um, supplier hardware. It just has to fulfill Omnox in a way your communication tools have to fulfill Wi-Fi. So you just have to remember those two standards. It's uh, Wi-Fi 6 and it's Omnox. And by combining those in one box in the Wi-Fi 6 access point from your way, uh, you just get those things together in a very efficient and affordable way. And this is not just dreaming. It was already done. So you can visit it in the UOA Open Lab in Munich, uh, where it is running already. We also have it here in Trump inside our Tenningen testbed of Omlox. Um, and there's another place uh, done by another company, part of Omlox, which is uh, Bridging IT, 
and they also install it in their technology experience in Heidelberg. So it's something which will definitely help you for the future. It will make your Industry 4.0 journey affordable and efficient. And I just can recommend uh, to try it. And you will just see that the power of standards will help you to fulfill your needs. Thank you. Now, welcome again, Jessim Demir, uh, one more time. After my colleague from Trumpf told about details about the solution, now we would like to share a demonstration of the solution in our open lab in Munich, together with our partner, Bridging IT, Heiko Viertel. Uh, so he will explain a little bit about uh, the cooperation model, how we are cooperating together to deliver the solution to our customers. I'm Heiko Viertel, I'm an account manager and practice lead for manufacturing uh, inside the Bridging IT and uh, we are very happy uh, to have this partnership uh, with uh, Huawei and our partners in our Omlox context and I'm happy to be here and to introduce uh, in the next slide some words about our partnership, our cooperation model and our business. Uh, the Bridging IT as a dynamic IT consulting company is very often the integration partner in such projects. We bring together the different technologies in such a way that all requirements of our customers are fulfilled. We screen the market and form partnerships that bring already an added value for everyone. Here in Huawei's Tech Lab, we combine the Wi-Fi 6 infrastructure from Huawei with ultra-wideband locating technology from our partner Trumpf with an AGV control system from NICE. With the real-time capable uh, RGLS hub from Heidelberg Mo Mobile, which already works according to the new open industrial uh, standard for locating technologies, OMLOX, serves as an integration platform. Hello everyone, my name is Yan Wang from Hyper Mobile International. Now let's have a look about the architecture of our joint solution. As you can see here, our AGVs in OpenLive are equipped with UWB tags. These tags can transmit signal automatically and regularly to our deep hub, the primary real-time locating middleware, which can integrate all kinds of locating technologies in one platform and based on this location data, more applications could be realized. For example, in this solution, our nice traffic management system. Now, let's back to reality to see how our solution looks like in real scenario. Now, welcome to Huawei OpenLive in East Mining. As you can see, the square shaped area is OpenLive. To simulate nearly a realistic production scenario, we use the geofence function of DeepHub to define four areas, namely inventory, two different machines, and a packing station. The green dots scattered across the map are the located objectives. Some of them are surrounded by a larger radius circle, which is a wider collision avoidance range set up by DeepHub to ensure that the collision avoidance alarm is triggered when they are getting close. Now let me tell you a story. One day you got an order from your client, which consists of two components. Now the material of component one is arrived in inventory. So after receiving the notification from DeepHub, our MES sent an AGV and a colleague to there for putting the material on AGV and transport it to machine one afterwards. When AGV enters inventory area, the overhead light is also lit due to geofencing function. While the AGB was transporting material to machine 1, our colleague suddenly stopped in front of it. Fortunately, our system has anti-collision function. So the AGB stopped in time and continued to transport the material after the colleague walked away. When the AGB enters machine 1 area at the end, the light is on and the arrival of material will also be recorded by system. While component 1 is being produced by machine 1, the material for component 2 arrives as inventory. So as in the previous process, the MES will assign an idle AGV to deliver the raw material to the area of machine 2. When both components of the order have been produced, 
the AGVs will deliver them from production area to the final packing station. Only after both parts have arrived at the packing station, the system will then indicate, now it's time to ship to the customer. So, as you can see, the whole process can be displayed on DeepHub. And thanks to the function of geofencing, triggered event, asset management, and anti-collision, the whole process could also be automatic. This is the magic of DeepHub, and this is the magic of our joint solution. Diaz, it's me again, Chessim. So now after you watched how the solution works, what are the added benefits of the solution to the customers, I would like to explain here the specific features of our Wi-Fi 6 solution that helps uh, to go ahead with integration to avoid the cabling of ultra wideband and uh, uh, have a joint solution, Wi-Fi 6 and uh, ultra wideband together. So there are different uh, features of our solution that you can see here uh, that we are utilizing, utilizing one of these features for the integration. Uh, here our smart antenna concept that's coming out from our 5G technology space. Here is a, a smooth handover or a smooth rooming concept of our Wi-Fi 6. And here actually that you can see uh, it's a VIP function, which means that we are able to reserve bandwidths for mission critical applications, uh, which we need actually for ultra wideband because uh, as uh, ultra wideband is getting used for uh, some uh, uh, use cases like uh, uh, electronic talk tools and so on in the assembly, it's uh, not possible to have some seconds of uh, interruptions. So we are using the reserve bandwidth for this mission critical application that reserve bandwidth for ultra wideband is not getting disturbed by the remaining uh, utilization of the Wi-Fi network. Thanks. So now continue with our next speaker, Mr. Jan Kirpen, who is CEO of KWS Computer Systems, and he will uh, showcase actually uh, industrial mobile tools powered by 5G. My name is Jan Köppen. I'm CEO of KWS uh, Computer Systeme. We are a small German-based uh, manufacturer of industrial controllers and industrial computers. To move forward, we at KWS have integrated the 5G communication into our wireless power tool controller platform that is used for industrial power tools um, that currently work on Wi-Fi to bring the benefits of 5G communication into the industrial environment. We have a portfolio of uh, platforms that can run in the industrial communication. The integration of 5G into our most compact controller platform shows how versatile 5G can be used in the industrial environment. Together with our embedded uh, edge controllers, uh, we integrate 5G into a complete production line and these readily available modules um, support our customers with uh, fast integration into their setup. Here we will show a scenario of an industrial power tool that is used by one of our customers currently in a line for production in the automotive industry. Um, it is used um, either on a wired interface or more commonly in the past um, with a wireless power tool um, using Wi-Fi communication. Here the controller communicates with the power tool to monitor each and every screw that has been placed during the production assembly. A normal screw will produce around about 600 kilobytes of data that contains all the torque the momentums and the other relevant parameters that are used to, for quality monitoring. In a normal setup, the communication takes around about two seconds. The advantage of 5G is a speed up in the communication and the release for the second screw to be, to be placed. This shortens the product cycles and uh, brings a higher throughput into the production.
This is what we have currently integrated into the tools and have verified on the site at different car manufacturers. But 5G can surely do much more than just having higher data rates. Also in the shorter latency we can do uh, better precision and synchronization and with the future development with time sensitive networks and uh, precision time protocols we will be moving into the area where we have high precision synchronization between different tools and that can also integrate um, security relevant measures into the 5G uh, controller platform. We have first verified these platforms at the open lab in Munich with Huawei where we have a 5G standalone network readily available and thus had a very fast integration, short loop in troubleshooting and detailed analysis of the communication. The collaboration between Huawei and KWS had been on a very short cycle time and we had very fast progress and very detailed analysis um, of what was going on on a network basis and thus could do the integration in, in virtually no time. For the presentation we do have a 5G power tool um, that is a derivative of the standard tool used by our customer and we connect it to the 5G standalone core network here at the Open Lab in Munich. Our line controller is connected via an Ethernet interface to the core. Where we don't have direct access to the core, we can use a gateway um, to make this connection. We have different screws where the torque required is individually programmed in the line controller and the controller monitors that each screw really is processed with the correct parameters. Thank you for watching. I would like to now continue with our next speaker, Mr. Professor Dr. Jens Lambrecht, who is co-founder and managing director at Gestalt Robotics, another partner of us in the AGV uh, space, and he will uh, present and share to you uh, mobile robots based on wireless connectivity uh, and AI. Hello and welcome to our short talk within the manufacturing session of Huawei's EcoConnect Europe 2021. My name is Jens Lambrecht. I'm one of the founders and managing directors of Gestalt Robotics. Our talk is entitled Semantic Mapping and Navigation for Mobile Robots based on wireless and AI. Consequently, we are talking about breakthrough technologies enabling a deep understanding of environments for mobile robots. Based on this, a lot more applications become feasible. Common basis for this is the usage of AI software services on the edge. In order to give you a quick introduction to, the, to this domain, I will first very briefly introduce our company and then the cloud robotics paradigm. And afterwards, present hands-on use cases also with the help of some videos. Gestalt Robotics is the leading service and technology provider at the interface of classic industrial automation and AI technologies. Our company's overall technology is based on three pillars. First, technical modularity, coming with a broad basis of industry-grade control and computer vision software functions that are typically provided as microservices in order to create tailored automation solutions with minimum effort. Second, we rely on networking and virtualization, utilizing cloud and edge computing as well as the usage of modern 4G, 5G radio networks as well as Wi-Fi 6. The last pillar is artificial intelligence, exploiting mostly machine learning services in order to create added value in terms of efficiency and flexibility of automation systems. With the help of these tech pillars, we are active in four overall application fields, providing innovative solutions for our customers. There is AI-empowered computer vision, intelligent robotics, adaptive worker assistance, and autonomous mobility for mobile robots and transport systems. The subject of this talk is mostly situated in the field of autonomous mobility, but covers also AI-based computer vision on the edge. 
But before we enter this specific field, I would like to introduce the paradigm of cloud robotics as this is crucial for taking the intelligence of robots to a completely new level. We've been considering the evolution of locally connected robots to first cloud connected robots in the era of Industry 4.0. Whereas the cloud has been used in this time mostly as data source and data sync, nowadays we are facing cloud and edge computing, taking flexible AI services to the machines on the shop floor and providing platforms that enable new business models and provision channels for industrial software. So from our point of view, offloading software functions to cloud and low latency connected edge devices provides many benefits all along the life cycle of hard and software in industrial automation. First of all, commissioning and deploying software are much more easy. Software updates could be deployed on the fly and must not be transferred to every machine controller on the shop floor. In terms of operation, we have the opportunity to set up intelligent software systems that share information and scale seamlessly. In addition, we are no longer restricted to limited computing resources of local machines. Moreover, distributed automation systems provide the opportunity to create open ecosystems, preventing vendor logins. In mobile robotics, this means, for example, controlling mixed fleets through a unified software basis and standardized interfaces. We can also reach longer operating times of mobile robots through offloading extensive computation as well as minimizing costs of the onboard computing hardware. And again, offloading software services to the edge and cloud may lead to novel business models and ecosystems that are currently about to evolve and will take a firm role in flexible production environments of the future. Let us now jump into some pioneering work on providing autonomous navigation as a service, including closed loop control for mobile robots. The project is based on one of the first 4G campus networks in Germany, as well as edge computing. This pilot project was yet transferred towards an industry-grade application. What started 2018 as a proof of concept project for even offloading real-time critical software functions to the edge, finally developed into a proven and certified industrial solution. During the last years, our company developed a microservice-based modular navigation stack that relies on an open middleware in order to connect cloud and edge seamlessly with mobile robots and transport systems in the field. This scenario involves offloading of the whole navigation stack, even real-time critical functions to the edge, but still relies on particular functions for person safety left on board. The overall solution bears an extension towards outdoor navigation, connects other machines and ERP systems, and is CE certified. So let's have a look on this application and practice in this little video. You see an edge-navigated mobile transport system at Osram plant in Schwab München. The fully autonomous transport of coils between two stations is put into practice. The environment is quite challenging for fully autonomous navigation, as floors are narrow and moving humans are all around. The communication also covers control of M2M functions regarding doors and stations, as well as the initialization of workflows in terms of fire emergencies. On top of the navigation, we are considering further edge-enabled AI functions that let us provide a deeper visual understanding of environments. In this video, you see the result of different deep learning-based software services on the edge that run in parallel and real-time processing a camera stream from the mobile robot. On the left-hand side, you see semantic segmentation, giving forward-looking scene understanding in terms of obstacles and paths. On the right hand side, you see asset detection trained on a specific data set for machines and goods of production. These machine learning based functions enable novel capabilities of understanding environments and can be used in full accordance with GDPR and the processing on the edge could be extended using deft images enabling the localization of assets. 
As depicted here on this slide, we go another step further, add information on localized objects on environmental maps that the robots are using for autonomous navigation. These results are semantic maps that form up-to-date digital representations of environments and can be considered as digital layout twins of factory and logistic environments. The semantic maps are, cru are a crucial enabler for next-level applications and a series of value-added functions. This is made possible through whoever, Huawei's reliable wireless network solutions towards 5G and Wi-Fi 6, as well as the Atlas Edge Computing Series. This video shows a recent pilot project we did together with T-Systems within a 5G industrial campus network. We incorporate additional object localization functions using the camera's depth images. Object localization information is then combined with the environmental maps that the robots are using for the navigation. We create semantic maps of the environments that are a key enabler for a series of value-added functions. On the upper right-hand side, you see the environmental map that is enriched by the semantics from objects in the surrounding. This information could be used for a bunch of novel value-added applications, starting with semantic-aware navigation, stock-taking, lost-and-found applications, and object-tracking. We at Gestalt Robotics are looking forward to shape the future of factories alongside with our customers and Huawei as a key partner. Thanks for listening to my talk. I hope we could rise in interest in edge and wireless enabled AI technologies for future-proof automation systems. Please feel free to get in contact with us in terms of collaboration and partnering. I'm deeply looking forward also for the further discussion. Thank you very much. Our next speaker coming from our partner Gefasoft, Mr. Arthur Mahler, and uh, he is a um, pre-sales consultant at G Gefasoft and he will uh, give a speech about wireless uh, IoT data acquisition for holistic plant uh, monitoring. Welcome to my presentation on wireless IoT data acquisition and holistic plant monitoring. My name is Arthur Mahler. I work for the Gefersoft as a presets consultant. In this role, I build and uh, present product demos and support customers um, in the planning and implementation of the MAS and SCALA projects with our product, Leonardo Sapient. In the next 15 minutes, I will um, talk about the new challenges manufacturing facilities have to face um, according to digital innovations and new, um, new challenges. Um, for these, I face these challenges, and we offer a tool set for innovation, um, which I will introduce later on in this presentation. After talking about our architecture for data acquisition and exchange, um, I'm going pre to present you a use case we implemented at an uh, automotive manufacturer. Uh, this use case um, demonstrates the value proposition and benefits uh, which we could offer you um, as Gefersoft in a partnership with Huawei. So let's start with the presentation. Modern manufacturing facilities um, face various challenges and uh, due to the demand of um, high flexibility and um, automation, um, the production equipment is taken to a new level. Um, this includes um, autonomous devices like AGVs, which you see here in the picture, um, which are the foundation of a new modern um, manufacturing process. To set up these uh, technologies, um, the installation of, um, of modern uh, communication hardware like Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi 6, uh, RFI, uh, RFID, and 5G is necessary to ensure continuous um, communication and data flow in rough production environments. Our IoT toolset for um, digital innovation um, integrates uh, various approaches. Um, one of these approaches is the wireless data acquisition. Um, so not only to um, acquire data from uh, steady or local um, PLCs or production equipment, but also for 
And now I will explain a simplified architecture model of our solution. Uh, down in the right corner, you see uh, the production um, equipment on shop floor level. For example, in this use case, um, we have the AGVs, which are connected via Wi-Fi 6 um, to our uh, edge gateway. This edge gateway um, connects every production equipment like PLCs, AGVs, um, logistics com components, or um, other production equipment. Uh, we are modern um, technologies like uh, OPC UA, MQTT, or TCP IP connections to our database. So uh, basically, the edge gateway is the main communication component um, to acquire data, um, pre-process it, and write it into the database. Uh, usually, this edge gateway is hosted locally uh, to ensure high performance and uh, short response times. But our solution, Legato Sapient, um, is, host, is designed to be uh, cloud agnostic and hosted um, on any any hardware instance um, which runs at the customer. The IoT use case uh, we implemented at an auto, auto, automotive OEM um, was successfully implemented for over 300 uh, AGVs. Uh, these AGVs are responsible for logistics processes and uh, move cars, car bodies, and parts of the cars through the um, complex production environment. Our software focuses on the um, data collection of statuses, alarms, and um, the current location of these HEVs. You can see here in the, um, in the picture on the bottom right, um, we have an example of a production line with four HEVs with the current status, which is colored in green when uh, everything is up and running, in red uh, when there, um, an alarm or a problem occurred, and in gray when the device is offline. So um, with the acquisition of this data, um, the, the maintenance staff is able to react um, on the current problems. So as uh, this production facility is about um, 150 by uh, 400 meters, um, they assembled a tablet on a small bicycle, um, which shows the real-time uh, status of the production equipment. And if anywhere in the production site an error occurs, they are able to quickly respond um, and uh, fix problems which occur on these devices. So the, the benefits and value proposition um, on this uh, use case is um, as the communication to the devices is standardized and we are modern technologies, it is very easy to integrate and simple to use. Also the, um, the user interface is very easy to, to design and after a short training it can be um, uh, every every um, administrator can be enabled to um, to build uh, these uh, reports and user interfaces. Due to the collection of alarms and KPIs, an increase of the production volume by um, instant uh, detection of downtimes is guaranteed. <clears throat> Also, the reduction of maintenance costs um, save a lot of money in the in the maintenance and in the, in the care for the production equipment. As I said before, also ongoing ongoing improvement by cyclic reporting and task management um, offers the possibility for a continuous improvement of processes and leads to a significant increase of efficiency in the manufacturing processes. In the partnership, partnership of DefaSoft and Huawei, 
Um, a lot of synergy is, synergies occur through the combination of our core comp uh, competencies. So um, Huawei provides the um, infrastructure for IoT, uh, like uh, technology for wireless data connection and smart devices. And uh, GeforSoft um, provides the central visualization and monitoring of online data, which you can see here in our use case uh, we've built with uh, Huawei, where we monitor um, the a small production line in real time with all the alarms, KPIs, and um, the current values um, which occur on this um, demo production line. So if you have any further questions, um, feel free to contact us. Um, so we can give a detailed uh, overview and also some demos or further information about our solutions. Thanks a lot, and I'm looking forward to uh, further discussions. Our next speaker is coming from Forcom, Mr. Franz Gruber, who is a founder and uh, advisor at Forcom, and he will give a speech about a digital lean manufacturing uh, solution and uh, how it's uh, getting integrated with Wi-Fi 6 uh, to speed up the implementation of lean management solution in the plants. And followed by a showcase, which is also getting done in our open lab uh, from uh, Mr. Jürgen Wischer, as well from Forcom. He is uh, head of solution management at Forcom. Hello, this is uh, Franz Gruber, founder and chairman of Forcam. And I want to speak today about um, digital lean manufacturing. How does such a solution look like? And um, what's important to know? Forcam has been founded 20 years ago. We are now based in uh, China, in Europe, and in the US. And approximately 100,000 machines have been connected by using our IIoT, IIoT solution uh, to improve productivity. When it comes to lean manufacturing, we clearly have identified that companies need the symbiosis of Industry 4.0 technology in combination with lean management. And as we all know, lean management has been initiated by Toyota, by Taichi Ono. When we look at the challenges we are facing when it comes to lean manufacturing, when it comes to digitization on the shop floor, there is a big need for achieving flexibility. That does mean there is a lack of flexibility. We, in most cases, find a wired infrastructure. And there is a need to standardize the infrastructure and also to deploy a wireless environment. Another challenge is that CIP processes are still missing. CIP stands for Continuous Improvement Process. That does mean to support the lean methodology, a continuous improvement process is necessary. And for that, you need a single source of truth because data is key for supporting a continuous improvement process. Another challenge we find is there is a missing link between the shop floor and ERP systems when it comes to the vertically integrated software solution. In order to create a digital twin of the production environment for real-time transparency, there is a need for vertical integration, the integration between the shop floor and the ERP backend. And last but not least, especially when it comes to decision makers, they're always asking for quick successes. This does mean what's the benefit of the project what's the return on invest and uh, the key is to start together with Huawei with a so-called 
proof of value, which does mean that's a pilot based on the value-based approach. That does mean the overall strategy should be think big, define your strategy, start small and scale fast. When it comes to decision makers, it's all about key performance indicators, KPIs. What are the most important KPIs when it comes to digitize the shop floor, the manufacturing environment? Let's have a look at McKinsey. That's the latest presentation shown by McKinsey at the World Economic Forum. And as you can see, they have identified several KPIs for measuring performance. And one of the most important KPIs definitely are when it comes to support the continuous improvement process and also when it comes to support sustainability as we all know to reduce co2 emissions is of paramount importance that does mean oe increase and uh, energy efficiencies are definitely two kpis you should keep on your mind when it comes to the architecture in order to provide data for those KPIs. You need both a wireless infrastructure, you need a software architecture, which also can be accessed by third party applications or where, we, where you can integrate your legacy applications. That does mean you need an open architecture when it comes to hardware, when it comes to achieve wireless communication and on the other side from the software perspective you need an open architecture the data should be easy be easily accessible by apis that's the key and the overall goal is to achieve a value-based digitalization through the entire value chain. That does mean when it comes to the shop floor, connectivity is key for any IIoT solution. That does mean besides a wireless infrastructure, you need the capability to integrate heterogeneous PLCs. In most companies, you will find machines dating back to the 70s. That does mean there is no OPC UA. And it's very costly to upgrade those PLCs to OPC UA. That does mean you need to have a software infrastructure which can deal with those heterogeneous PLCs. That does mean brownfield integration is key when it comes to achieve a great ROI, return on invest. And secondly, that data then should be provided to any application. That's the key. That does mean you need to have a software infrastructure to provide the data to any application asking for shop floor data. That does mean when it comes to measure energy consumption, you might uh, capture electricity. When it comes to quality management, you might uh, capture process data in order to measure length or pressure or whatever. When it comes to performance measurement, then we talk about OEE. You need to collect data in order to define the utilization of a machine tool. When it comes to order data management, you want to know when has a process started, for example, when has setup time started or production time. And so it goes on. That does mean the key challenge is to provide the data by Huawei's and Forcom's infrastructure to any application. That does mean when we look again to the architecture, Huawei and Forcom can provide. If you look on the connectivity level, Huawei can provide outstanding capabilities when it comes to wireless connectivity by using Wi-Fi 6 or 5G. And 4 on the other side can provide the software 
to communicate with any PLC and to provide the data to a data lake, which also can be provided by Huawei to provide the data into a Huawei digital manufacturing data lake. That's how the architecture looks like. And then the data can be accessed by any SAP or other ERP system. Let's have a look at the shop floor management approach as we have started with. In order to achieve outstanding results, you need to combine technology and lean management methodologies. That does mean to educate the continuous improvement organization is very important. Then you can use the data to drive the continuous improvement process based on real-time data, based on the digital twin of the production. And this data also then can be aggregated to support decision makers. The goal is to provide a single source of data to support the continuous improvement process. What can be achieved? If you look at those numbers, they speak for themselves. When it comes to the communication infrastructure, Huawei will provide you with uh, references and testimonials where you can have a look at the results. And the same can be added by Forcam when it uh, comes down to, for example, to the OEE KPI, what customers have been able to achieve by using that kind of software architecture to improve productivity significantly. How to start? Each journey begins with the first step. And therefore, our offer to you is, please contact our friends from Huawei and ask for a discovery call. We need to understand your challenges. We need to understand your pains. And then we can come up with a joint solution and maybe even to support you when it comes to defining your strategy for digitalization of your shop floor. This also will help you to identify and prioritize a project, a pilot project. And then the next step would be to start with a proof of value, which does mean a clearly defined pilot project. And the aim is to deliver also the first results within, let's say, three months. And then based on that evaluation, a rollout can be done. Many thanks for your listening, and uh, we wish you a great journey when it comes to digitalize your shop floor. Thank you. Welcome to our solution demonstration session with our partner Forcom. Mr. Jürgen Wilscher, welcome to our lab in Munich, Ismaning. We will show to you the solution in terms of lean management, how to optimize uh, business processes. And the core of the solution is actually combining the capabilities on the infrastructure with capabilities on the solution layer to enable uh, much faster deployment of the solution in terms of plug and play approach. Uh, into your enterprise. Now handing over the words to Mr. Wilshire. Well, Jason, thanks a lot for handing over to me. Like as you said, we have two elements here. So what is Forcam about? We have 20 years of history in machine connectivity. Means speaking the protocols of your machines. And the second thing is what we see here is all the production KPIs that help you to improve your business and your processes. Um, why do we need both elements? So the first element is how can we get into the machine? Even so we speak the language, we need a physical connection. And that is what Jason will introduce to us later on. The second element is where do we calculate all these production KPIs? So it can be either in the cloud. So of course, there we have solutions with Huawei. And the second thing is how can we connect physically into the plant level? So let's have a quick look to the lean story for now. Here we have a machine running, it shows green, so it's producing, it's making money. Now what is the plan 
in our production. I have calculated a certain setup time to set up my machine. And I expect production and, of course, pieces I can sell afterwards. If we have a look to reality, very often there's a big deviation. Maybe setup times are too long. Then we have some stoppages. We have technical problems with the machine or maybe organizational ones. So the first element we need is the complete transparency of the reality. If we have those transparency, what can we do next? But well, typically, people focus on technology. And of course, that is the foundation of everything. But once we have the transparency, we need to think about how can we get material to the machine better? Do we have the right people that are skilled? Are the quality topics solved? Are the tools available? So I mean, all the stoppages, all the problems reflect somehow into my processes that help my production. So let's have a look to some of the KPIs. Now, we have, as I said, we have a machine running. It has some quantities, some target figures. And let's assume the machine goes down now. Right at that second, the machine is off through the whole network, through the Huawei infrastructure. The message comes into the cloud system, or as Jason will explain later on, in your company, if you like, where we calculate the reasons, we display it, and then we can think about how good is my company, where can I act and improve. And for example, here, you see by week, we needed a week to set up our demo place. Actually, we needed one week more. Last week, we got our machine active, and then Zen is doing a very good job. So it means all these metrics, how well are machines running? How fast are they? Where are the good quantities? Where is the scrap? Where can I take my improvements on? So all this data just helps you to understand where things are and what to do to make it better. Now I'd like to hand over to Cezim again so that he explains to us about the infrastructure, how we can we get physically to the machine, and where can we have the software run that calculates all the KPIs for us. Now, thanks a lot, Jürgen, for the explanation. And I will explain now what does it mean on the connectivity layer means how connect the machines to the solution. The main topic, as you can see, you need to have the data from your machine layer through the network layer, either on your on-premise network, means on-premise data center, or on-premise edge, or on the cloud layer. But the first step is you need to connect the machines to the network layer. Normally, if you do such a project, you are starting with a proof of concept. And in the proof of concept, maybe you are just using wired network to connect the machines to the network. But imagine after you achieve your target in the proof of concept phase, you would like to deploy the solution to multiple machines, multiple production lines, maybe hundreds or thousands of machines and so on. And the best way to do it is actually getting rid of the wired network from the machine layer to the network layer means using wireless network. And for exactly this purpose, we developed a called CPE unit. It's a customer premise equipment that you can easily connect your machine through an Ethernet connectivity on the machine layer directly on the ground at the machine with such a CPE mo module to the network. You can use either a Wi-Fi 6 CPE module or 5G CPE module that you are able uh, to deploy such a solution to hundreds or thousands of machines uh, to the entire factory or to multiple factories. So here, as I said, easily to connect uh, uh, through Ethernet connectivity with a short PoE cable or with a short cable to your machine and you are able to provide all the data on the machine layer that you're collecting, which is required to the solution to the network 
and we are not only providing the terminal to the machine, but also the entire network, either Wi-Fi 6 or 5G in terms of infrastructure. Our last speaker I would like to introduce is Mr. Martin Strehl from uh, the company Borgwarner. He is managing EHS at this company, which is a customer from uh, our partner Forcom. And he will give an experience sharing from customer's perspective on reducing energy consumption with self of lean management. So, hello together. Here is uh, Martin Strehl from Borg Warner Cooling System. I am manager management system since uh, 29 years here in, in Borg Warner in Markdorf. Um, um, the, the theme today is uh, reducing energy consumption with lean management at Borg Warner in Markdorf. So first, let's talk a little bit about our, about our vision and our mission. Our vision at Borg Warner is to have a clean, energy efficient world. And we deliver innovative and sustainable mobility solutions for the vehicle market. Let's talk about Borg Warner, um, some numbers. Um, Borg Warner um, are more than 50,000 employees at 96 locations in 24 countries. And our sales in 2020 were 10, more than $10 billion. Borg Warner is a global uh, manufacturer of vehicle parts, tier one supplier for, for every um, car. Maker. So, Borgwana cooling systems in Markdorf. Um, we are um, a little plant with approximately 210 employees. Our top customers are MAN, MAN, Scania, Volvo, Daimler, ZNHI, Echo, Caterpillar, Ford, and so on. We produce um, about 1.3 million products in 2020. Um, our products are viscous fan drives, Vistronic fan drives, and fans. So we are manufacturing cooling systems for the car market. Our main certifications are AITF 69 ISO 40001 and 50001, and we have the Ford Q1 certification. So we also have R&D centers here in Markdorf and we um, develop viscous fan drives and fans here in Markdorf. So the strategic goals, um, digitalization of the shop floor management. We, we do this with lean management to improve our productivity here in Markdorf and sustainability regarding to reduce carbon emission. The, our goal is to be carbon neutral by 2035. So um, here in Markdorf, we use the edge connectivity, very important to introduce. Um, we have a wireless machine connectivity in our plant with, uh, with the Forcam system. And with this wireless um, connectivity, we also um, use um, the energy data. We, we have energy data from the system and we can um, check all energy for every um, production here in Markdorf. And that's very important to induce because this is one of the minor um, argumentation to reduce carbon and um, electricity. So here is our connectivity to our energy management systems. We have um, a consent um, controllers in our machines and then we use an MES server-based data management with ethanol pools for all media, electricity, compressed air, and so on. So every energy we use here in Markdorf is controlled by our energy management system in 4CAM. So also um, important is to analyze this about uh, uh, productivity apps. 
Um, the reporting is full transparency in the shop floor and the machines and plant performance exactly to every second we produce. Um, our drill down to all criteria, workplace, order material and personnel. Workplace specific OEE reporting in real time. That's very important because um, OEE is our main KPI here in Markdorf. We track all um, machines um, with OEE and energy. Um, also visualization and alerting is very important because every downtime we have is um, extremely near to the to the maintenance department they are they can um, react uh, in seconds and that's very important to reduce all downtimes and it's also very important to reduce energy and have um, carbon neutrality in the future so here um, a slide of our Real-time OEE performance tracking on the left side, you see the SAP data in our system. On the right side, the machine data, and we compare it um, together and against them. So here you can see in the middle slide, it's the black line is the target, the plant um, through output. And um, you can see the machine data with the green and the red and the gray. Um, lines here in this slide and you can see which opportunity for improvement there there is and this improvement we for this improvement we use our lean management here in Markdorf to improve processes to improve cycle times and to reduce costs and to reduce energy and that's very important for for us here in Markdorf. The visualization management is also important for our workers, for our management stuff, because everyone in the management can have a look on our visualization if all machines are running. Um, the green points here um, mean that these machines and these product lines are running. The, the yellow um, means it's a setup and the red we had a downtown. And everyone in the management um, is um, checking this for production. Then we have also daily co cockpits and shift cockpits. Um, cockpit means um, that we have all data from this production line or from this machine in one slide. And we can see how productive we are in the manufacturing area. So we have on the left side um, the, the, the data from SAP, then the top problems, the top parts which are to improve with lean management and on the right side we have the details from the daily production or the shift production and the history of the last 12 weeks, we um, um, improved our, our, our OEE from this line, this machine, or this department. Every shift, every day, every week. So let's talk a little bit about continuous improvement on the shop floor. We visualize that continuous improvement. We have daily meetings with our operators, write down the problems, um, solve the problems. And this is all every day reported at these boards. And we have a digital, on the right side, we have a digital visual management of the whole department. Um, where we can see which machine is running, which machine is not planned, which machine has a downtime or a setup. And um, for this, we use the OEE reports and all reports for Forecom. And then we will write down manual the problems and solve these problems and write it down on this board. Um, continuous improvement means a lot of communication with the operators and the shift leaders, and we do it every shift and every day. 
So let's talk a little bit about um, sustainability management, um, about ESG, environmental, social criteria, governance looks, and so on. So Bob Warner said we had to be carbon neutral in 2035 and we use all possibilities to reduce um, energy here in Markdorf, um, do it with um, solar and photovoltaic at the plant. And this is the goal for 2035 to be um, carbon neutral. So um, energy con consumption. So with our forecast tracking of energy at every machine and at every line and, and, and the whole plant, we have the possibility to, to, to make it uh, visual um, how our energy consumption is. And with every little um, uh, improvement um, with lean management, we improve our carbon neutrality. So this means um, our main energy is electric and electricity and every um, cycle time reduction, every reduction in, in, in process times is a reducing of our carbon output. And that's important to say because every um, consumption will be um, reduced with lean um, management. So here are some reports from the Forcom system, which we track every day, um, reports from machines, from lines. Um, so here you can see on the, on the left side, it's um, part of our uh, molding machines, which consumption they have in, in, in one day and in, in one year. And we track that every day, um, look at the processes, and look at the machines, how the consumption will be reduced um, if we, uh, when we uh, introduce the um, uh, continuous improvement and lean activity at this machine. So what are the results from our forecast data scheduling? Um, we have energy-based production scheduling to reduce our energy consumption. We, we will have a look on every, um, production order in the last half year. And you can see it on the right side, all these points are production orders. We will compare it with the OEE and the, the lot size. And at, at least we can see which lot size is the best lot si size to produce because it's the best lot size with the best energy um, performance. <laughs> So we did data correlation, OEE with the power consumption per order and do analysis of energy consumption to produce an order to find most energy efficient machines in the processes. So this will help us to improve our energy consumption and um, be lean with energy and reduce carbon. So at least we are certified since 20. 15 uh, 50, uh, with the ISO 50,000 wine certification. Um, we have an MES based Forcom energy management, and this helps us to reduce energy and helps us to reduce carbon and to be carbon neutral in 2035. So, at least, um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, Bye bye. Dear ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot for your time to listen to our sessions and our speakers uh, in our uh, Body Connect Europe this year in the manufacturing session. And if there is any question, uh, any topics that we would like uh, and we can support you, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to contact us uh, through the uh, given contact addresses. Thanks a lot.